Let's uh, say a nice welcome to uh, Mike Byrne, Tony Fogel, and uh, <laughs> just thinking, do I need to use the mic? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. 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 Maybe you don't need that mic. Then. Right. Uh, apologies, I do usually have a PowerPoint presentation, but the girl's gone missing, bless her. Uh, with my laptop, so apologies for that. So I'm going to refer to my notes every now and again, but usually once I see it, I just click into it. Okay, my name's Michael, and I'm professionally known as Michael. I've left a few cards here and there around just to let you know. That's simply because I'm not only obviously my name is, but I'm a professional psychic medium, and I go all around the world doing what I do. And my guide's called Michael, which is very rare when you get a medium with the same name guide. But I'm not here to talk about that tonight. I'm actually here to talk about mysticism and the belief of the mystic. Uh, and there's a lot of different things. So I'm going to try and keep this as basic as I can. To, not just to simplify it, but I'm also one of these people that have a very simple philosophy that if you don't experience something, you don't really believe it. Because we can all talk a good game, but I always try to have an interactive kind of talk. This is my first one of the year. I usually do about 12 a year. Uh, and I go around different countries doing this with different interpreters, believe it or not. But the message usually gets across when you experience it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, to begin with, everything is energy. And I'm sure you've come across that, but the mystic actually believes that this everything is energy is actually just one energy. And this one energy, even though it's made up of different particles and different levels of vibration or frequency, right? okay. is really just one energy. Now, having said that, this one energy, the mystic believes, is conscious or aware of itself. And with this energy being conscious and aware of itself, it's also positive. Now, a lot of people when I say that, they say, well, what do you mean positive? Well, if it's all one energy, no time, no space, everywhere, everything, then take it from me, it just is. And the key to all this is really learning to tap into this one energy. Because the mystic believes this is who you and I really are. We are this one energy, we are connected, we are brother, sister as one. And the whole thing is, is trying to experience and get back to what I believe right at the beginning was this one energy and feeling connected. And we've all had mystic in our little ways, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's walking on a mountain, whether it's seeing a rainbow, which we talked about before. Now, the key to this, and this is the key to me, is understanding that energy is everything. If it's one and conscious of itself, then doesn't that mean we're this? And you and I, that is. Meaning, if you learn to tap back into this energy and raise your consciousness, raise your awareness, that you leave this illusional world behind. And that's the problem with the powers that be. They're trying to keep us suppressed. And the more suppressed that we try to get, this natural <coughs> feeling inside is want to burst free. And I'm seeing that everywhere. We were talking earlier about this awakening that's happening. It's been going on for years. In the 60s, yes, it was drug-induced, but the basic thing was people have a mystical experiences. And they were just trying to sustain it. I hope to show you a form of sustaining, if you like. I always refer to like the mobile phone. The mobile phone will work absolutely fine with you, but if you don't recharge it, it's nothing. Does that make sense, by the way? So I'm going to hopefully recharge you tonight. Now, I believe a fortnight ago, you had a bit of a sense of meditation, uh, and a few people fell asleep. <laughs> Bless. You shouldn't fall asleep in what I do today, because we're going to work on the chakras a little bit later on. Now, having said that, <coughs> and this really annoys me on a personal level, Powers that be not only want to keep suppressed, one of the easiest ways of doing it is keeping us in debt. And debt creates worry, it creates fear. And the key to all this is to get beyond that on a personal level. You can talk a good game, as I say, to certain people, and you can tell them, and, and, but unless you experience this, and the key now is not to just talk about it, but really have a go at what I'm going to show you a little bit later on. I'm going to show you a couple of simple exercises so you can actually feel the energy. 
Do you understand what I mean by aura? Does everybody understand yeah. what I mean by aura? One of my gifts is I actually see the aura, but not like the rainbow aura of, or of someone in a mood and he changes to purple or red. I actually see it as, very simply as like the ready brick glow. You know that advert? Now once I tap into that ready black glow of you, I can tell your life story, believe me. The key to this is I want you to experience that on a natural level. Now, keeping us suppressed and in what we call fear. If you come across Anthony Robbins, he actually symbolizes it very, very well as in fear, F-E-A-R, as false evidence appearing real. And it really is. And the more that you keep people suppressed, the more that we become suppressed. Our life becomes suppressed and that illusion and the mystic believes that the mind is what gets in the way. And even as Eckhart Tolle says, uh, he believes that the mind is there as an instrument or a tool to be used when necessary. And if possible, to be put, put, put to one side and live within that energy. Because this is why we don't live in this positivity. Because the powers that be, right from the word go, are conditioning you to live in the sense of fear. And Death, as I say, is one of them, and it's a major one that really annoys me on a personal level that the bankers, as they're called, and in my neck of the country where I come from, we change the, the B to the W, uh, and they don't a shower of them, no disrespect, but they keep you suppressed through debt. That fear-based element. Now, I don't want to put you off in any way, shape or form, but is anybody up to actually experiencing this aura, this energy? Has anybody ever experienced it on a practical level before? Yes or no? Anybody want to volunteer? What did he say, don't volunteer? Now you can all have a go at this, and I really do advise you to have a go at it, because I do believe once you practically experience something, as I said before, it really does begin to work. And it begins to make you understand that there is a force out there, and it is a force, it's an essence, that you need to raise your vibrations, and as I said, we're going to do that. Do you want to take this on board? Do you want to have a little go? Do you want to all try at the same time so she's not embarrassed? Yeah. Do you want to do that? Yep. If I talk you through it? Yeah. Okay, you come up and do it with me. If you do this correctly and you ground yourself, just like electricity, this energy has to be grounded. I want you to face each other, not yet, just in a second. You have to stand up, so Louise, you will stand up facing me. Feet shoulder width apart, that means not together, that means at least shoulder width apart. You need to bend the knees to ground the energy. If you hold your hands, so if your hands are called, in a prayer position, bend your knee, bend your elbows. Nice and relaxed, like that. Now, that means you've got to relax your shoulders, to be very tense, and it's just nerves. So, as you relax, you, I want you to try this in a minute. I am now going to cup a hands, I'm going to ground my body, and you will push outwards, and I will resist you. And what happens is, you do it on a gradual basis, so you don't fight each other, I'm tuning into you. You'll know in a minute, right? Once you're tuned in, when I actually, and I tell you, I'll, step, I'll let go very gently, I'll step back. All I want you to do, and just try this for now, as relaxed as you can, sit into that box a little bit wider, just relax. Right. All I want you to do is this. Just come up and down. So it's like you've got a ball, so nice and relaxed. I want you to come up like this and come down. This is based on like what kinetics and things like that, okay? The reason to do this, because as I say, unless you experience it, you won't know it exists. So Louise, let's go for this. So what happens is, nice and relaxed in the shoulders, just drop into that. Just begin to push out as gently as you can and I will resist you. So this is nice, keep pushing. And what happens, it gets to a certain point and I begin to see it. It's like a trace of energy, you know like when you get a sparkler? But keep pushing and keep resisting. Now I'm going to hold you there. Okay, push. Do you know, push with your fingers as well. So I want you to push with your fingers. What's happening now? We're building the resistance up, but we're actually tuning into each other. You nearly know, got to do it. You feel that sway. Once that comes in, you know. okay. Now all you're doing is pushing and resisting, and I want you all to have a go at this. Now and begin to see it start to come. I'm going to give you a countdown. I'm going to really go for this. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 
six. Four, two. Now as relax as you can. Relax, 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 relax. Bring your hands out. Bring them together. Feeling it. Yes. In the mouth. And bring them together. It's pulling my arms out. Okay, keep Can you describe? Um, it's like a magnet pulling my arms. It's exactly like it. it's a magnet. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Just simply, based on kinetics, do you understand kinetics, anybody? Sorry? It's very similar, but the key is, what is it? It's energy. And what you perceive as energy, unless you experience it, you wouldn't understand that. Well, I can see your, I can read you where I'm because I can see that. Mm -hmm. Louise. Now, do me a favour. Have a go. Get your partner, stand up. Feet shoulder width apart. Hold your hands, one of you, in the prayer position. Hang on, listen, listen, now everybody, everybody, one of you hold your hands in the prayer position, fingers pointing to your partner, one of you cup them, but you're the one cupping has to have the fingers down. So you were cup out here. Now, don't go tense in the shoulders, you must relax the shoulders. I don't expect it. <laughs> Listen, 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 listen everybody, I don't expect, I don't expect this to happen to everybody, but it will if you go with it in a relaxed manner. The key is don't fight each other, one of you on the inside, you are going to push out, the one on the outside will resist you, but allow them to come out shoulder width apart. My mouth's gone very dry. Right, so the one on the inside begins to push out. The one on the outside, resist them. Now, some people aren't that slim, so make sure you come out to the shoulder width. Bring them right out. Gradually pull out. That's going to work. Believe me, that will work. Come right out, it's not that slim. That will work. Keep pushing, keep resisting. That will work. See how you start to sweat. The energy's grounding. Keep pushing. Let it come out a bit. Let it come out a bit. A bit more. Come out. Come out. There. Let it go in there. Now, listen, I'm going to give you a countdown. Keep pushing, keep resisting. When I say now, you will take your hands away very, very gently, those on the outside, because I've seen people fall over. So the one on the inside, keep pushing. I'll give you a countdown. That won't work now, you've let go. That won't work now. So the one on the inside, as relaxed as you can, keep pushing. One on the outside. Here we go, 10, keep pushing, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, keep pushing, keep resisting, 3, 2, 1, very slowly, those on the outside, take your hands away, step back from your partner, those on the inside, bring your hands out, elbows up, hands out, elbows right up, don't have your fingers touching, bring them back in front of the stomach. It's called the Dantian. This is the energy center. <laughs> Come out again. As if you've got wings. <laughs> I can see bits of it, but it's not really you're thinking something. Right, put your hand up if anybody felt anything. Yeah. Don't kid yourself. What did you feel? Girl there, uh, what did you feel? Not bad. Girl behind. Ok, 
Okay. Now, just reverse the process. The rebel was on the inside, now it goes on the outside. Okay, one on the inside, begin to push out. What on the outside? Now make sure you come out shoulder width. Shoulder width. Shoulder width. Right, are we pushing, are we resisting? If you focus in between, you might begin to see the energy. And you'll be gobsmacked how you see it, by the way, if you do. Here we go, keep pushing and resist, and remember, when I've done the countdown, the one on the outside, you slowly take your hands away. The one on the inside, just bring them out and down. Ten. Keep pushing, keep resisting. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, slowly, relax the one on the inside, relax, 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 totally relax, it's like you're holding a ball. Right, everybody sit down. Seriously, put your hands up if you felt an energy or a force there. Try it. Right, I like that. I felt something. Now the key is, this energy is surrounding the body. It runs through the body. It surrounds everything. We are all part of it. And the whole thing about that is, if you can connect with that energy on a regular basis, which I'm going to show you later, through the word meditation, and it, a lot of people get put off when they hear meditation. It's not going to be like you experienced two weeks ago, whenever it was. You're going to be actually buzzing from within. And that old saying in conversations with God, if you don't go within, you go without. So yes, I want you to just stay after the break, and I want you to, to go with this. You're going to be going through the chakras, you're going to be going through the sounds. You will feel that energy, and this is what I'm trying to get at, without even inducing it from another person. But you just said something that I absolutely adore. The fact that you, you, you've experienced Tai Chi. I teach Tai Chi, I teach meditation, I've been doing it for many, many years. What I love about it is that once you get to use this energy and you start manipulating it, because that's what you're doing, to work for you, you become it. And you might have, for argument's sake, what you're going to experience tonight, half a minute peace tomorrow. If you do it tomorrow, you'll get a minute the next day. So on and so forth. And I live on a vibration that I don't allow negativity in. I learn from it, but I don't look at it as negativity. Yes, it's a learning curve. Yes, we are learning all the time. But there's an old saying, and again, it's in conversations with God, I've seen it many, many other places. You're actually just remembering. You really are just remembering. Now, it sounds mad. I have to give you a little polite warning here. For anybody who's just done that exercise, if you feel weepy, don't worry. And that could be in an hour's time. Because what you're doing is, you're tapping into an energy system 
but you're also picking up the other person you've been doing it with. And that's why when you do the meditation later, you're doing it on a personal level, not somebody else's energy. Does that make sense? So if you've just done that with a psycho, <laughs> don't be afraid if you get a bit angry later. Uh, but seriously, no. So I'm going to hopefully get you buzzing from within, and that energy that hopefully some of you have just experienced, and it really is. If you don't experience it, you won't believe it's there, I promise you. But if you do experience it through what we're going to do in the meditation after the break, you'll be amazed how long and how far that can take you. And it's like that old saying then, that you become in the world, but you're not of it. And I honestly believe that's what it is. It's not an alien thing. It's a very natural thing. And again, it's like we were talking before. Uh, negativity to me is a negativity. It's just a, it's just a level of vibration. <coughs> And someone was saying about the rain, some people really hate the rain. And I don't know why, but they do. But you have to put up with the rain to see the rainbow, don't you? And everybody feels an association with a rainbow because it's part of your DNA, it's, it's in the chakras. Anybody not know what I mean by chakras? Just put your hand up if you've never heard of chakras. So you all understand what I'm saying. And that colour of the rainbow appertains to the colour of the chakras. Put the sounds with it, and believe me, your life will change from tonight if you were to do it on a consistent level. And apparently it's going to go on YouTube, so once you get back, you can see it in time. Two or three weeks, he said it should be there. Try it. Don't take my word for it. Try it. I've been teaching this for maybe 14 years now, professionally. And I've seen people's lives change. Not overnight, it's a process. And my belief, not just the fact that my psychic ability and the mediumship side of what I do, which hopefully I might get a little chance to ex express myself at the end, is all about, and I hope you take this the right way, it's not trying to impress anybody tonight. It's trying to prove that love doesn't die. And if you come from the heart and you do this for yourself, then you're not taking anybody else's energy on. You just have now to induce it, to feel it. But I want you to know it exists. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. I will take a few questions. Does anybody want, a, want a, a question on that at all? Has anybody got a question on what we've just done? Yeah, go on. Sorry, you just give me your name you, before you say it. Sue. Sue, go on, Sue. Uh, my question is, um, were you demonstrating what energy feels like? <coughs> That's what I'm after, really. Because um, for those of us with scientific minds, we I, kind I of love know... It. I love it. We, we kind of know what happens when you, you um, contract muscles on one side Correct. and it will give the impression. Do you remember when we done it in, as a kid and we done it between the wall? Have you ever yeah. seen that? The same <laughs> principle. Why I'm doing it is so they experience the energy. So when I take them through the sounds, that energy is running through them. So, so that we recognise the feeling of energy, That's all. even though the cause of it on this occasion is something different. Well, the cause from a scientific point of view is muscular. Yeah. I understand okay. that. Okay. It's just experience. It's as simple as that. But yeah, I totally understand where you come up from. Anybody else? <clears throat> come on. Um, how did you pers This is a personal question. Yeah. How did you discover this? How, how did you arrive at this point in your life? The spirit. The spirit came to you. No, not the spirit came to me. How can I put it? The spirit had taught me everything <coughs> I know. And then it would lead me to a book or it lead like talking about being a scientific. When I knew this one energy existed, right, people were saying I was off my head, okay? And then I come across quantum <coughs> physics. And quantum physics is breaking it all down to one energy, isn't it? Have you come across quantum physics in that sense? Sue? A little. Nothing blank at me, there you go. So you're sort of touching on, but you know it all comes down to the actual <coughs> quantum of, of the proton and everything? Um, I'm not very familiar with that. All, all I'm aware of is that what we experienced then... It's just experience. I've That's actually experienced that when I've, I've put my hands over people's bodies and I've felt certain areas blocked. So well, it felt like what you... There's a thing come out called Reiki. You come across yeah. Reiki. Yeah. Anybody a Reikiist in the room? You must have felt the energy then if you're, if you're a Reikiist. Yeah. Did you feel that then? Yeah. Wonderful. Because Reikiists feel it immediately. So you don't have to induce it from another person. The minute you're saying, put your hands on somebody, that's, that's eons old. 
That's how people lived and healed themselves many years ago. It goes right back to the beginning of that one energy. Made up of different particles, but you, as you say there, it, what triggered it in you? What was there a moment in your life that it triggered, that was triggered, where you went? I've got time to say that to everybody. Do you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. I died in all the hate as a child. You died. I died. You can look it up. It's on record. Uh, my, guy, my, guy, my dad flew a guy called uh, Professor Rickman, but he wasn't a professor at the time. Over from Switzerland, all children with what I've got. Has anybody heard of Hirschsprung's disease? <laughs> Not going into that. I had Hirschsprung's disease. Uh, my dad, the, the babies were dying in all the hay. Uh, my dad flew a guy called, at the time, Dr. Rickman. Uh, from Switzerland. He's now classed as God in that particular field. What he wrote, apparently there was only four lines of what it was about. Uh, he's now wrote a whole book and an emphasis and everything else. Please, please, sorry. On the, on the thing. And he's now retired. But basically, he got flown over. Uh, my dad, God, look, every time he got drunk, he used to say to me, God, you cost me a bomb. Bless him. <laughs> £400 in 1962 is a lot of money, apparently. Uh, so he obviously had to put him up, and he ended up going to London, he became a professor, and he saved my life. I was one of, I was only the one of, I think I was one of 19, 19 died and I was the one who survived, around that time. Can any of you go for me? I don't know, I haven't looked that up. All it was, he said, he came to me mum and he said he heard the angels, and my mum said, is that a nice way of telling me he died? He said, oh he died, he lost them. He said, but he definitely heard the angels. My mum then never thought anything of it. Growing up, when you say to somebody, my dad was in the army, tough guy, when you say to somebody, dad, he's lying because I can see his energy all going west. I got a clout. Do you know what I mean? And that energy is real, and I'd see it going west if they were lying to him. But then when he found out the little things were starting to come true, all their opinions started changing. And you know you're asking about the definitive moment. My daughter was born on the four, I was born on the 13th of May, 1962. She was born on the 14th of May, 1988. And not for one minute did they tell me it was ever a registry because there's not enough known about it. Uh, and she was born with the same condition, right? And they said to me, I was brought up a staunch Catholic in that sense that all my family were Catholic. I didn't go to church all the time, but you know, your mum, your grandmother, she was a... Uh, presidents at UCM, they all said to me, we need a priest, your daughter's dying. I said, what's she got? And I, they didn't know. So they flew a, a, my angel, my personal angel, as I call her, a Jenny Waltman in from Stoke Mandeville. And she came in and she said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. And the good news is, she's got hair sprungs. And I, I flipped. What do you mean she's got hair sprungs? I thought, no one told me it was her registry. I said, so what's the good news? She says, I know. And I didn't click. And when she said, I know, I realised that, I said, she said, I can do something about it. Anyway, the operation, five hour operation. And basically, you end up with, a, you know what a colostomy is? And then it's, you have a colostomy for about nine months. So, first nine months of my life, I had a colostomy, got it reversed. And that's when a lot of them died anyway, before then and after then. So, my daughter had the same. Uh, but the operation didn't go, let's just say, fantastically well. And Jenny Walker came up to me and said, I believe your, your, your family are Catholic. I get a bit obsessed, so bear with me on this one. Uh, your daughter should die tonight. She said, I can't say she won't, but I can't say she will. She said, if you believe in prayer, go and get a priest. So my mum, God love her, we'll get the priest. So the priest is on his way in. It gets to about half three in the morning. And I'm sitting there, there's me, my wife at the time, and my mum. And I'm looking at this five-week-old baby, what, what can I say? And then my nan appeared. Now, I've seen spirits all my life, but spirits in me, again, I can only explain as energy. It's not like I'm looking at, you remember being up Scotty and shimmer? It's like that. So I would look at the curtains, and I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, all curtains had flowers on them. But flowers, when I was a real young child, used to talk to me, and I thought, I don't could do it. And of course, the cloud came when I went to school, don't you go and I think you're nuts. So of course, my nan appears to me, now she died 10 years previous. <laughs> uh, I said to my mum, there's my nan. She said, what do you mean? There's your nanny. I said, 
You know, she's standing there as clear as I can see you, even though it was energy. And I mean, that was the clearest indication that I could see spirit. And she said, did she come for Laura? I said, no, she hasn't come for Laura. I said, Laura's going to be okay. She said, if your nanny's going to tell you she's going to be okay, get rid of that priest. And the priest walked in and went, oh, Jesus. <laughs> My daughter's 23 with a two and a half year old child herself to this day. And that makes me cry because I knew she had three or four ops to go after that. And she got the old clay when she's about, it's actually in the echo about her when she was four. Uh, but she went through off, off after off and I had no doubt that she was going to be fine. And that was the definitive moment for me. And my mum said to me, I never believed in some of the things I said to her. And she said, if you can do that for yourself, son, what can you do for other people? And get out there. And just as a little scenario to that, I'm a nurse and nurse trained, I'm an NNEB by the way, so you don't give up 12 weeks holiday a year to do this every day in my life. But the key to it all was, is, and, and it makes me laugh this, that my mum's sister, again, Stone Catholic, sent me to a convent. Now, do you all know Paul O'Grady, don't you? He's from Birkenhead, where I'm from. He used to go to a school called St. Joseph's. I get sent to St. Joseph's to be saved convent. No one even knows it's there to this day. And I knock on the door, I'm 26 years of age, and this little lady, and the only reason I thought she was a nun, because she had a cross here, real angry looking woman, she said to me, what do you want? I said, don't know. I've still been sent to you. She said, what do you want? I said, I'm 26 years of age. I don't know, I talk to dead people. And something she said changed my life then. She said, you mean angels? And just something, and this is what I'm saying, inside, when you feel it, when you experience something, and we've all experienced strange things that you maybe can't explain, but unless you experience that, you don't really believe it. I believe that, and I said, yeah, angels. She said, come in, son, so do I. And she trained me for two years. Now, she didn't train me on the gift as in how to get the gift. She trained me on how to harness it. And she said to me, don't tell a soul, she said, or otherwise they'll ban you and they'll kick me out. She said, but the minute you become professional, she said, tell the world. And that was my definitive moment. So thank you for asking me. Is that okay? Yeah. And that's why I do what I do today. And I gave up nursery nursing and Believe me, I loved it. I loved the school environment. I loved the kids. I loved the six weeks holiday in the summer, which I don't get anymore. But. Any more questions? So, with that in your mind, right? What time is it? Because someone just said it to me before. Do you want to break now? Come back and we'll go right through this and do it and have a go at it. And if it's not for you, then I have to respect that if that's okay. So, I want to thank you for the first part. Have a drink. A little bite to eat, and I'll see you back. How long? It's about 20, 25 minutes. As long as it takes to smoke two cigarettes. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs>
If nothing else, if you listen to my voice and go through what I ask you to do, I call it your song. We all have a song to sing or a story to tell. And it's really important that you experience your song. So we're going to base our, our sounds on the chakras. And I promise you, when I ask you to open your eyes, I'm doing it with your eyes closed, <coughs> so nobody's judging anybody else. Because what, what you can do, and it does happen, is you can burst out laughing and that's fine. But when we do it, we're going to go through the sounds three times. I'm going to tell you the sound, and I'm going to talk you through it. The first thing I have to do, do you remember like we were talking to Sue before, is something I just said to her happened today. Now I seen her in her energy. And bless her, she went to met her today. I said, I know. And it's not an egotistical, it's to do with energy. But then she let the mind get in the way. Sometimes suspend the mind, go through what you're going to go through, and at the end, when you ask you to open your eyes, even if it's only a split second, if it's half a minute, a minute, you should feel and experience peace. And that energy that hopefully some of you felt there is going to race gently, or flow as we call it, through the body. Does that make sense? Good. Here's the hard bit. Getting you to close your eyes. Right then, nice and simple, nothing weird, we're not going to float around the room. I call this the lotus flower. Now the lotus flower basically goes from three stages. It goes from the mud, through the water, it receives the light and it blossoms. If you can call that enlightenment, you can call it what you want. It's all in a name. The key is to experience the sound with the colours which I'm going to take you through and I just want to bring you to peace. One minute a day, maybe two minutes tomorrow. Right, so you don't have to sit any weird. All I want you to do is close your eyes. I'm going to take you through three what we call stages of going from what we call the beta state that you're in now to the alpha state. Now the alpha state is right next to the sleep state. That's why some people fell asleep last time. I don't allow you to go there. And it's only in the way I talk and the way I bring you around. But go with this, have an open mind, and that's the key. No judging, and tell me what you think at the end of it. So, as you begin to close your eyes, close your mouth, and breathe through the nostrils. And even if that feels really strange at first, just go through it where you simply breathe in and you breathe out. Now the Buddhists will do this for an hour or maybe two hours on end. We're just going to do it for two minutes. To simply, three techniques that quiet the mind and get that inner voice, you know that mad voice that says, did I, did I lock the door? Did I lock the car? That voice we want to go. So just focus on the nostrils now. So imagine, even when your eyes are closed, you're looking down the nostrils, sorry, down the nose at the nostrils and focus on that breath. One more minute. If you really get into this, you'll feel a little warm breath on the top of, you, top of your lip there. As that begins to quiet through this, what we call this, by the way, this is called breath of life. And the Buddha says the same thing for hours on end. Now, quite simply, just begin to let that go. And we're going to do a technique where we breathe in for four seconds, we hold the breath in for four seconds, we breathe out for four seconds and we hold the out breath for four seconds. Sounds complicated. In for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. We're just going to do it three times, so it's a cycle of three. So, don't panic. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to even say, you didn't do it. I just want you to have a go at it. Just simply have a go at breathing in slowly for four seconds, hold the breath for four, breathe out for four and hold that out breath for four. Try it three times, and if it doesn't work, don't worry. At least you've had a go. Now there's no rush. Nobody's looking at you because we've all got our eyes closed. Try and get do that cycle. In for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four, three times. Once you've done it three times, relax and breathe gently to yourself. Just let it go. Now, if anybody has to cough, don't hold her in, just cough. If anybody has to sneeze, don't hold her in, just sneeze. If you have to readjust your body, you'll find you will have to as this energy begins to rise in you. The key is to just relax, and if you have to do it, just feel free to do it. You will not disturb anybody, I promise you. 
Now, once you've done that three times, as I say, let it go. The third and final technique to get you to the alpha state, which remember is the meditation state, is simply, in your own time, you're going to take a deep breath. And as you breathe out, you're going to say to yourself the number 10, just in the mind. You're going to then take another deep breath, and as you breathe out, you say to yourself the number 9, so on and so forth. So when you're ready, begin that in-breath, and as you breathe out, just say the number 10 to yourself. Now don't rush this, don't think you're missing out and oh, what if you start to talk and we haven't got down? It's the key is to just relax. I'm going to allow you to come down and I want you to include zero. That is so important, we have to take you to what we call a zero point. So as you count yourself down nice and slow, <coughs> whether you're on six now, whether you're still on eight, it doesn't matter. Just come right down nice and gently. Breathing out, counting yourself down, and please include zero. Once you include zero as you breathe out and you say in the mind zero, completely relax and completely just let it go. And you'll find just gently that you start regulating your breath now as you're bringing yourself down to what we call the meditation state. This is the alpha state. And remember, we're getting rid of the mind. This is what we do on a regular basis. Now, once you're down and you've said zero, let it go. But don't panic. You've got time. As you're doing this, I actually said to you, you're familiar with the chakras, and most of you said yes. So that's good. And that's, that's wonderful from my point of view, because a lot of people I talk to have never even heard of the chakras sometimes. And that's why they bring me in to introduce it to them. So, come right down, include zero, let it go, relax. And I want you to take your attention to the base of the spine. Now this is the first chakra. Now I want you to think of the chakra, nothing weird, but maybe like the size of a golf ball, to keep it simple. Now as a chakra is a vortex of energy, and the key is to get it moving, revolving. Don't worry about that, but that is the key to it, but don't worry about that, that happens on a natural level. Now what you're doing is you're going to go through what we call a process, it's not a happening, it's not just going to happen tonight, it's a process that you build up on a regular basis that gives you not just health and vitality, but it gives you a resonance that you can begin to take on board and live with. Right, we should be all right down to the zero and relaxing now. Take that awareness to the base chakra. Now think of it if you want as that, you know, whatever you're used to, or maybe if you haven't done this before, maybe a golf ball or anything that size. Just think an energy, vortex of energy there. The colour is red. Now it's not danger. Red means energy. It means vitality. You don't build a house without the foundation. You're setting a foundation right now. Now the sound that goes with this is the sound Lal. And you literally pronounce it in one breath. So what you're going to do, and I want you to listen to this, you're going to take a deep breath, and I'll do it first so you get an idea, but literally you're going to take a deep breath and you're going to go Lal. And it means you're going to linger the sound with the lips closed. Now the key is to relax. You're going to find your whole body getting a bit tense now as I'm speaking. Nobody is judging you. But if you listen and you feel this sound, there'll be a certain point in the room when it resonates absolutely perfect. But we're going to do it three times. So we're going to do it once and then I want you to relax. I'll tell you when to do it the second time. By the third time, we should be quite confident in the sound. Now, so nice and relaxed. And I want you to do this, you don't have to, absolutely not, but if you just give this a go, you'll be amazed at when we get to the crown chakra. So nice and relaxed. Everybody, and I want to hear if we can, take an in-breath, and together perform the sound of... Bring the lips together, 
and try and carry the sound out. Excellent. Nice and right. Just let it go. That was the first go. Hopefully by the third one, we should begin to feel it. And that's the key, is to feel the resonance in the base of the spine, the chakra. If you can bring in the colour red as a safer vitality and foundation, <coughs> happy days. Now, take an in-breath. Linger, 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 linger. That was much better. Let's get that inhibition going. Let's just get the inhibition going. Nobody's judging you. We're all in the same world. We're all of the one same vibration. We're all of one energy, remember. Third and final time. Take a deep breath. Excellent. Now relax. Take your attention, your awareness, the second chakra. It's three inches below the navel. The colour is orange. The first sound was low, the second sound is balm. And literally what you've just done with the first, you're going to do with the second, the sound of balm. But we're going to linger it as long as we can. So take your awareness three inches below the navel, the colour orange, and the sound of balm. Just relax. Take a deep breath. Keep going. Keep going. Don't let that, that inhibition go. Just go. Nobody's judging you. That was excellent for your first time. Now relax. Is anybody getting tense on me? Take a deep breath. It was there for about two seconds. I don't know whether anyone was aware of that, but that was it. Just about two seconds in that, you were the excellent. It doesn't usually happen that quickly. Relax. Third time. Take a deep breath. It was really good, well done. <coughs> we go to the third chakra. The third chakra is where the solar plexus is. Where the ribs meet at the top there. Now the sound is wrong. So we've done long, we've done wrong, and now it's wrong. <coughs> the R. Emphasis on the R. The colour is yellow. So relax. Take your attention to the solar plexus just under the ribs there. Take a deep breath.
whole chakra is the only chakra that actually has two colours. <coughs> it has the green, which is for balance and harmony, and the pink for love. Now, you're going to go completely out of breath as you do this one. The sound is ah. Oh. <coughs> Just like when you go to the doctors and he says, stick your tongue out, and you go ah. Oh. Now, the key is to take a deep breath when he asks you to, and when you perform the sound, you'll just run out of breath. And then I'll give you the second or two to recover, because it is quite a strong sound. So, nice and relaxed. Take your attention to the heart. Colour green mixed with the colour pink for balance, harmony and love. Take a deep breath. Ah. together on that one so you just run out of breath. Excellent. Just give your time to self recover. Emphasis on the heart. Once you get used to this you'll feel it emanating. Take a deep breath. Oh. to relax on this, focus on the throat. If there's a problem with the throat chakra, you'll feel it in the resonance right now as you do this. And it might break or two here or there. That's fine, let's maybe break through that by the third one. So the sound is hung as long as you can. Now relax, emphasis on the throat, take a deep breath. Oh. Now, as the lips are together, feel it. Relax. Emphasis on the throat. Try and feel it. Color blue. Take a deep breath. ourselves and maybe tell that person or other person in a very loving way, no. Last one, take a deep breath. Focus right now on your third eye, even though your eyes are closed, you will see the colour it's supposed to be. It's there, I promise you. The key is to relax and look within, and you'll see that colour. It's a purpley violet kind of colour. Now the sound is shawm. S H A R M. <coughs> shawm. But as long as you can do it. Again, emphasis as the, as the lips come together. 
So relax, focus on the third eye. So you're looking into the third eye now, hopefully from within. Take a deep breath. Really not balanced here. Get this third eye in balance. Focus on the third eye from within. That colour purple, violet type of colour. Take a deep breath. Wonderful. That was much better. Third and final one. Take a deep breath. absolutely fine, but I see it as light, I see it as dome, I see it as the pathway. That's why when you look at the old paintings, you see this, uh, it's called, it doesn't matter, behind the head, halo. halo, thank you, it's always gold usually or light, and that's what it represents, so there was insight many years ago, these are all Sanskrit sounds by the way. Now, the sound is that universal sound that we've all heard, which is old. O-H-M if you like, or double M. Om. So your really emphasis is on the Om as you're doing it. Try and pronounce that Om at the beginning. It's really important. <coughs> Bring the lips together and just linger as long as you can. So the sound of Om, it's universal. Focus on the crown of the head and imagine it opening into the light. Take a deep breath. Wonderful start, strange middle, good end. Try and keep it consistent. Look for that all oh, that roll of the mouth and the tongue there. Take a deep breath. Understand what the sound OM actually means. Cool. Well, it's the connection between the mechanism and the micronism, so it's the expression of the outside world when you're expressing it outwards, and then the OM, um, the, the inner side, so it's the 
you reflect and you connect it to everything external and then you connect it to everything internal and the resonance of everything because everything vibrates. Do you know what you call them? <clears throat> I am. Um... So you've gone from a base foundation through the heart chakra and opened up to I am that I am. I exactly as above, so below. The sound is so loud. Sound of? Yes, sir. Okay. I believe it. The key here, if you were to do that on a regular basis, and let's just say you've done it first thing in the morning, you sound the sound of Om at the end of it. You're, you are saying, I am, and your very next thought creates the rest of your day. So if you open up, Om, you're saying to the universe, I am, and if you say pissed off, you'll have a pissed off day. If you are saying, oh my am, I'm just loving, or feel good, believe me, don't take my word for it, try it. Anybody who comes from a worry vibration, and we all worry, and my father to myself, if you have to get the mind out of the way, this is how you do it. I promise you, you might have a nice day, as I said to you before, for one minute, maybe two minutes tomorrow. Whenever you're feeling, and you do have to feel this, a little out of resonance, try that. But you're right, it's everything coming together as well. It's opening up as I am that. I am. Somebody give me a word, we were talking about how important words are before, for the name of God. Yahweh. Yahweh. <coughs> Yah, who's that resonant from? You know, Yahweh, where's that resonance from? Allah. No, no, <coughs> hang on, hang on. Let's take it one step at a time. What's the sound of the heart vibration? Heart chakra. Oh. Yah, yeah? Allah. Anything else? Jehovah. Oh, H. Sorry? Um, because some people call God Hugh. That is old H. H. I understand what you mean. What I'm trying to get at, the resonance is there from Sanskrit, one of the earliest languages available. They knew something that the sound or resonance of God is R. Oh. And in all religions, the sound of R ah is the even na. Ah. If you come from this resonance, <coughs> being a father, anybody who has kids will understand. You don't think your child's ill, or you don't think your child's happy. You know it. Mm. And when you know the resonance of God, as in, not the guy who sits in the cloud judging people. When you know the resonance of God, you know it here, within you. Hence the saying, if you don't go within, you go without. If you want to know God on that energy vibrational level, try it. Now, and I really mean this, give her a go. It will be on YouTube, as you know, so you can re reinforce it. You can go back to it when it comes on. And just try it. <coughs> People who have had breakdowns, and I'm what you call a spiritual advisor as well. I'm not religious and I'm not a spiritualist because as you know, I was actually trained or harnessed by a nun, Sister Jo. I'm telling you, people who I've met from all over the world and they flew to my office to have this session on a one-to-one -one with me, they've came from all over for one reason, to get well. It's not about, oh, my bad knee or my bad shoulder, but it's about an emotional residence that can take you from a lower vibration with the powers to be, what you do, to a higher vibration on a consistent level. And it's like being plugged into the, into, you know, the electricity board, if you like. You go and touch them prongs and you'll get a shock. This is doing it on a natural level, that if you get to a certain sound, which is on on a gradual level, so don't just go straight to own because you've missed out the foundation thing. 
And I promise you, life will take on a whole new meaning. Synchronicity will come into it. You all hear about synchronicity, yeah? How some things happen, you don't know why I've met that person, but if I didn't meet them, I wouldn't have spoken to them. And I'd have spoken to them, oh my God, like I just said to the guy who just remembered about Paul, where is he? Our friend there, I seen Paul in your energy, he needs help. You said, I don't know Paul. Ten minutes later, you're told, oh my God, this be nice. Does he need help? Now I'm getting personal, yes or no? Yeah. Find out, yeah. ask him. And you, it's how you perceive help. Now you're resonant like that, maybe it doesn't. Does that make sense? It's how we perceive things. But again, unless you experience that, and I have to thank you, because that was absolutely wonderful. Some people, like our friend here, giggle. It's allowed, don't worry. And some people think I'm off my head. And it's allowed, that's fine. I promise you though, life will change. And serendipity, as we call it, will come into your life much more. Then, I will tell you what I, I personally believe, that if you resonate at a certain level, and this is where it brings in, you, you've all heard of the law of attraction. The one thing missing from the law of attraction, why haven't we all, you know, why haven't we all got Ferraris, why haven't we all got the big house? Because we're not resonating in what we want, if that's what you want to call it. And that's why they're all saying you get what you need, not what you want. But I believe the first law that people miss out on is the law of creation. That's the first law of the universe. So you're creating now a vibration that is I am. You're sending it out and then the law of attraction comes in. So you have to create that. You're a co-creator within this universe. And if you create that vibration that sends you out there, and don't be surprised if someone just smiles at you for no reason when you leave here. Don't be surprised if you attract what you're giving off. And it sounds mad, but it's absolutely the way of the world. It's the people, as I say, want you not to know. Try it. I urge you to give it a go. Consistently, and in one year, I know you think, what, one year? One month it'll change your life. One year, you'll never go back to a negative resonance. Because you'll feel it when you're out of sync, and you'll just say, oh yeah, that's with so-and-so, that's so-and-so. <coughs> Any questions? Do you, do you see the same, because um, I, I know we get tied up with this God religion and, and you know if you look at some of the ancient cultures and the way they've done certain dances and certain festivals at certain times of the year, to do, to do the, it's all to do with vibration <coughs> and frequency. Hence the moon, I don't know if anybody's really seen it the other day, but it's the biggest I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You feel a resonance. <coughs> and they say the moon is the goddess. Some do. So what I'm saying is maybe it's the goddess rising in all of us. Maybe that's, maybe that's why we're out of balance. There's a lot of people here standing in the yard at 12 o'clock at night looking at the stairs. They don't know why they're doing it. Talk about us again. They hope the neighbours are. That's when I get the phone call. Michael, they've gone nuts. Still fully closed. So you've never heard of Moonbait? You've not heard of Moonbait in series? I can take you to a place to do in North Wales. They actually do moon bathe, by the way. It's a, it's a true thing, and it's very, very respectable. But they moon bathe on certain days of the year. Says moons. Yeah. I don't personally, but people do believe me. It's called moon bathing. You're soaking up the energy. It's the goddess rising in you. The whole reason we're out of balance has been very masculine for 2,000 years. This age of Aquarius is the goddess rising, the feminine. But we don't want going to the other side. We want to just bring in the balance of the god goddess. Just for an argument's sake, if you want to try it, and I know a lot of these people do, as you say I am, try saying goddess. It's who you really are. That's what the mystic believes. That you bring the God, as in you've had two thousand years, with the Goddess, and bring it together as one resonance, the sound of R. Your life will change, I promise you. Absolutely, 100%. It's whether you want to change, that's the key. Change is a bit scared, you know. What did I say to you before? There's nothing to fear. Fear is fear. 
What is it? False evidence appearing real. That's what they want you to think. I know, but you can find it, it changed on your own in the house, can't why, you? Why is it fearful to change? I just, I just think we're very comfortable in paradigms and, and it's... Well, if you're comfortable, don't do it. But if you want change, and it has to come from here, not here. You said something before before about what was it? Heavy metal. Yeah, 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 yeah like, like, no, 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 no. Dude, shut up. No, but that's that's. It was interesting. I used to listen to a lot of Krang on the way to work. Why do you think music resonates with certain people and not with others? I just think it tunes well, to certain. What's that? Vibration, frequency. It depends on the mood you're in. How many times have you heard a song come on and you go, and you've gone all sallow and oh, uh, melancholy and oh my god. And I just <coughs> think, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's resonance. If you want to make yourself sad, just go and put a sad record on. But someone might not think that's sad, no more think that's a love song. True, 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 true. So it's all about resonance. That's what you're teaching yourself doing this. To resonate for you, not for anybody else. So even though we induced the energy before to experience that it's real, this is inducing it for you. If you don't want to change, don't do it. Oh man, go and get another beer. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Try it. And that resonance, if you've got nothing to fear, what you're going to attract to you because you are creating, law of attraction comes after the law of creation. Create the resonance, I think you'll welcome the change. Because you're giving off a vibration that will come to you on a higher vibration. But don't do it today, then leave it three months and go, well, I think I'll get done another go. Because nothing happens. <coughs> what does it? Yes, sir. Do you think God enters your life? I think we are God. S. God we are God. God S. What? What? However you perceive it. To me, it's an intelligence. It's a co-creative energy. That we are. We are just we are. Just one more question. Well, can you see into the future? Absolutely. One hundred percent. We all can. If we learn, oh, to, oh, yeah. if we learn to resonate. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I love what I do. Didn't give up my full-time job to do this full-time for nothing. It's not a job, it's a vocation. And I absolutely adore the fact that you give me a chance and you've experienced it. Have a lovely night and I'll say good night, God bless. We've got the room for a...